Hello, today we'll be checking out a few points of notable activity in the past three days. A swarm near Peru and a comparison of shaking intensities on the east and west coast of the United States. So we have had a bit of notable activity in the past three days. Let's start over here just off the coast of Peru. We have had a somewhat major swarm of earthquakes. This is all across a range of magnitude fours, fives, and almost sixes. Taking a look at the depth of all these earthquakes, it looks like they all occurred around 10 kilometers of depth. And the latest earthquake in this storm was a magnitude 4.8 about 5 hours ago. Staying in Peru, there was a magnitude 5.5 today around 6 hours ago. This was in northern Peru on the border of Ecuador. It also had a did you feel it of 2 and a shake map of 4 as MMI levels. Let's come over here to South Carolina where there was a magnitude 2.5 this was today at 0133 UTC it also had a somewhat shallow depth of 3.1 kilometers and looking to the left here it is highlighted in red so this is a significant earthquake um, as the USGS has listed it it also has a did you feel it of 6 which is pretty strong for a magnitude 2.5 Coming over to the Did You Feel It, it also has 1,226 Did You Feel It reports. Coming over to the Did You Feel It map, it was felt over quite a wide area. Coming over to the Shake map in finer detail, it was felt down into Lexington, up near Camden, and then in the middle here is Denseville. Looks like there was one response for the MMI of 6. Coming down to Southern California, they did see a magnitude of 3.0 today at 0.452 UTC. It also had a shallow depth of about 4.3 kilometers. This was near Wrightwood, California. Looks like it has also had two small aftershocks, smaller than magnitude of 1. Coming a bit north here into Washington, we have seen a few earthquakes near both Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens. Today at 0.853 UTC, there was a small magnitude. 0.2 earthquake just off the base of Mount St. Helens. And north of that to Mount Rainier, there was also a small magnitude 2.1 just off of the base of Mount Rainier. This was today at 0242 UTC. Now coming over here near Atka, Alaska, or just south of it in the ocean, we have seen a small swarm of earthquakes, nine earthquakes in the past seven days. And these are all smaller than magnitude 5. This swarm is of note because if we look at the past 30 days, this is a unique swarm that happened all at once, or somewhat all at once. Coming over to the EMSC, we did have a magnitude of 4.4 in eastern Turkey. This was just 41 minutes ago. So three days ago on Friday, there was for some reason a plethora of released news articles and videos about Hawaii and Mauna Loa. They had all kinds of headlines and they're talking about Mauna Loa could be preparing for an imminent eruption. Now these articles were very weird because in the past couple of days the USGS and HVO have said nothing special about Hawaii and Mauna Loa hinting towards an eruption. For some reason, all at once, all on the same day, a bunch of news articles picked up the same story and kind of put out some scare articles. So this is a website here called uh, Beat of Hawaii. And this is a small article released October 29th, 2022. And they have some of the example headlines over here. Seen in dozens of earthquakes detected as Hawaii's Mauna Loa, world's largest active volcano, remains in state of heightened unrest. People, Hawaii residents warned of possible lava disaster as volcano rumbles and we'd have so on and so on. So interestingly, this is actually all affecting tourism and the state is trying to tell media to shut up. Coming over to the current seismic activity in Hawaii for the past 24 hours, the largest earthquake we have seen was a magnitude 3.1 near Kilauea. Here's some interesting information about East Coast earthquakes versus West Coast earthquakes. There are less faults somewhat on the East Coast, so they do get less earthquakes but the ground composition and geography makes it so the ground will actually shake a lot more on the east coast versus the west coast. We can see that with smaller earthquakes on the east coast having a lot more felt reports and felt intensities on average compared to the west coast. We can see the best example of this here. 
This is a magnitude of 5.8 near Mineral, Virginia. This was in 2011, August 23rd. This happened at 1751 UTC, also at a six kilometer depth. This earthquake has the most did you feel it responses out of any earthquake in the USGS catalog. This earthquake has 131,616 felt reports for a magnitude 5.8. There have been stronger earthquakes on the west coast with less felt reports. Coming over to the plotted did you feel it responses. There are responses as far as Chicago. There are responses as far as Windsor, Michigan, or Southern Michigan. There are felt reports down in Charleston. So I pulled up the finer one kilometer response plotted map and our computer's not liking it too well, but we'll pull through. We can see all these yellow and red responses are all across this vast area here. For comparison in felt reports, here is a magnitude 5.5 earthquake near East Foothills, California. This was in 2007 on October 31st, so this was actually exactly 15 years ago. This earthquake had 60,241 felt reports, and it is, it is also a smaller earthquake than the one over on the east coast we looked at a second ago. Interestingly, the tectonic summary says this occurred near Alum Rock, which is the same location that earthquake occurred not too long ago. Coming over to the plotted, did you feel it responses for this 5.5 in 2011? We can see the San Jose area did feel strong shaking. There are a lot of felt reports well into San Francisco, north of San Francisco, into Sonoma and Windsor, another w different Windsor than the one on the east coast. Very few felt reports in Sacramento for this earthquake. We can actually see a good amount of felt reports in Fresno, including two responses for magnitude 6 shaking. So that is just a bit of information and some examples for shaking intensities on the east and west. Let's come over to the NHC. They are currently tracking Tropical Storm Lisa. This is just southwest of Puerto Rico or just north of Panama. Eastern Pacific there is no activity. The Central Pacific there is no activity. Coming back over to the Atlantic they are also tracking disturbance number one. It currently has a 10% chance of forming a cyclone in the next 48 hours. Let's take a look at Tropical Storm Lisa reading their summary. Tropical storm conditions are possible on Jamaica today. Interests along the coast of Central America, especially near Belize, and the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico should monitor the progress of this system. Additional watches and warnings will likely be required by late today. Zooming into their model, it looks like it will be making landfall around 8 a.m. Wednesday. Keeping on the NHC, let's check out disturbance number one. In their summary, they say this system in the next two to three days is forecast to be absorbed by a larger subtropical low. All right, so eyes on Tropical Storm Lisa. Thank you for checking out today's video and stay tuned for the next one.